Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be taking a look at gold and silver. And there's a reason why I want to do this. And I'll take the last little bit of this episode to take a look at Bitcoin. So stay tuned for that. But the overall market sentiment is really what I want to dive into. So that in mind, I'll just give you a little bit of the intro. Go. Awesome, ladies and gentlemen. So silver, you know, I meant to actually get a video out about silver about two weeks ago because there's something forming that I was really interested in. It was this descending channel. Um, now, for those of you that are into technical analysis and just trying to understand uh, market movements and sentiment in general, when we see stuff like this and when we see a close uh, above the mid of the channel, a little bit higher than where it had been closing before, it becomes an important area. Now, you could actually draw this a few different ways, but more importantly, what I want to talk about silver today is for one of the market operators, like the sensibilities behind looking at other things to try to understand what it is that you're looking at, right? So commonly, you don't just want to study, like say you're into trees. Like you don't just look at the pine tree. You try to understand how all these different trees work together, right? So I know it's a very abstract sentiment. It's probably just because I love nature. But here, when we're looking at the overall market sentiments, we have to remember that blockchain, the crypto space, they're not isolated. The entire market sentiments move in kind of lockstep. And this is a really important area to pay attention to because of its relationship to what a lot of people, especially the older generations, will call hard money. Now, I'm a fan of gold and silver. I, th I think that everyone should have it in their portfolio. I actually always keep, like, I always have some silver, silver on me. It's got this nice, right, thing. You get the nice little flicky sound out of it. But the important part here is understanding what this means for market sentiment. So, when we had the breakout of this res uh, previous resistance line, we jumped up 25, 37% already. Um, this is a noticeable indicator that the market sentiment is going to be preparing for a lot more money printing because this pandemic isn't going away easy. Now, there are a few things I've been really excited about in the pan, like in the um, you know, medical sector and some of the things we can do with like serology testing, which is like papers that are really cheap that you can give to people and they could find out if they're sick if, with any kind of coronavirus, right? So we said, well, if you have, if you spit on the paper, you actually know like two or three days before you get sick because the virus hasn't fully replicated in your body, but it'll still show up on the serological testing. So there are ways that I think we're going to really circumvent some of the problems of this pandemic and really quell it, but that's probably a few months away. But in the meantime, the money printing is going to continue. So that's going to inflate a lot of the markets. Now, for anyone that happens to be in the markets, that's a great thing because now all of your assets are going to go up. The downside is, is that creates a massively inflationary process, but we're also in the midst of a massively deflationary process, which is the evolution of tech. So I want to take, uh, now again, I want to look at silver here only for the fact that it's breaking out. And then that to me signals a market sentiment change towards hard money. And again, this is why I think the crypto sector is going to do very well because you want to invest in what the kids understand and the kids understand tech more like so people like Warren Buffett, who, you know, have had physical assets their whole life. They don't really understand the um, the way the younger generations are viewing their assets, their time, and their space, etc. So gold and silver represent an older part of this diagram, which is the hard money. Now, gold looks like it's going to do this beautiful cup and handle, and you have a multi-year cup forming here. Right, this is pretty important, and I think uh, a handle. So as long as we close above the handle at around fifteen hundred dollars here, this will be beautiful. I mean, if it breaks into new all-time highs, which it's just about to, gold could really set kind of the lead for the market sentiments and around the blockchain sector as well. Because remember, we're not totally isolated from sentiments. If people start to feel bad, all assets prices will diminish because the sentiment of the market has massively declined. You cannot separate emotions from trading. Although as a trader, you should eventually get rid of your emotions in the trades that you make. But in, in general, what we're witnessing is people's um, feelings about the future, right? That's why we always watch the volatility index. You know, right now, if you look at the volatility index on the weekly, we've touched back down to our 50-week 50, 50 moving average. Like, okay, we're like, we're pretty high up there. We're, we've, uh, we haven't been up at this level of volatility for quite some time, not since the crash of 2008 when everyone thought everything was over. So we haven't like the society as a whole hasn't felt this volatile for quite some time. And I actually speculate we'll jump back up here to the 37 point here on volatility, maybe even a little higher depending on what happens. You know, if this was in China right now, with all the flooding that's going on, our volatility index would already be back up to 37 points. So important to keep an eye on that. Um, now, next, I want to take a look at Bitcoin. 
Um, for those of you that are in the private bear group, you know what I'm excited about for this already. Um, the Bitcoin has been forming itself in, in, a, in either a Wyckoff accumulation, reaccumulation, or distribution phase. Now, there's real arguments to say that it is in a reaccumulation phase, right? We had a nice A drop right here. We're in a, been in a long phase of B. We've had this kind of creek run for Bitcoin um, all the way over all the way over into uh, what we're talking about almost a month in, in phase D where we've kind of peaked out at the bottom. Now, a big question is going to be, can we get above 9,600? Because if we get above 9,600 and 9,700 and this becomes, um, this becomes a, a, like the close in the box range, then we're, this is going to signal to us that we have a change in sentiment into uh, the, the positive area of, of our trade, right? So then we'll change. And, uh, you know, I've actually re-entered Bitcoin back at 90.90 for those, again, you're in our private group. If you want to join the private group, again, guys, it, we're offering a refund. So go sign up. And if you don't like it, you just get a refund, no questions asked. So there's, there's no risk to you to sign up and, and become a part of the community for a little bit and see if you like it. Stick around if you do. If you don't, give your money back and we're happy to move on. Um, but again, I want to point out, guys, that trading and investing is not for the faint of heart. It's not for the weak-minded. These things can take years to play out, decades sometimes, and it's important to be able to have that type of vision and mentality. Otherwise, you'll get caught up running between trades and you're the kind of person that gets fleeced. Don't be that person. Do your own due diligence. Do your own homework. None of this is financial advice. And keep keep in mind how important it is that you kind of learn to ignore other people. What you what what we try to do with the private bear den is instill a sense of... Um, confidence in the tra in the trades that you see and the way you can make those trades because I, I can't no one can trade everything right we've been we uh, we had an entry in IOTX here uh, because of this this Wyckoff phase and we're in phase D as far as we can tell at around 69 Satoshis it's been it's been written up in the bear den uh, for almost two or three weeks now and it's finally taking off right so some of this is has been is about volatility and exposure and really understanding what it takes to be a good investor and trader and I'm a super big fan of the Wyckoff method because of the understanding of the composite man you need to think of the markets almost as this invisible person who's trying to take your money because they are really good at what they do they are really good at ramping the markets up and then slamming them back down and reaccumulating more if they think it's a good project. People have hundreds of millions of dollars when they play in this space, and that's how they play. They play with these long calculated moves. So if you're a newbie or rookie investor or trader, you often get wiped out because you don't understand how that invisible man behind the screen plays. Understanding this Wyckoff accumulation method can really help you understand how that how that invisible like uh, Wizard of Oz is kind of playing behind the screens and how you can use it to your advantage. It's very, very important to, to recognize some of this stuff. So very, very excited in the private bear den to be going over all the stuff, seeing so many of you guys understand, make these trades and ex like and hit your profits. That's phenomenal to me. I'm so excited to see that. It means that everyone is learning and growing together and I could not have been happier with the outcome of this event right now. So. Um, thank you guys. It's been one hell of a ride. I'm really, really looking forward to the future, even though it's going to be a rough and bumpy ride. Uh, there's some beautiful fields that lie ahead be uh, before us there. So keep your eyes. Uh, uh, I think it's, what is it? The calm before, during, and after the storm is really what we're looking for here as traders, investors. Remember that you have time. Remember that you have space. And uh, for those things that are um, temporary, like our life and our loved ones, remember to be kind and compassionate. And that's all I can say for today. This is Tia with the Arcane Bear. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm signing off. Thank you guys all so much, and we will see you again on the other side of the show, I guess.